In this video, I'm going to share a step-by-step -step process with you for selling print-on-demand products on Etsy through my designs. And there will be a ton of different time-saving features and tips in this video that will make your life a lot easier. I'm going to go over a variety of different topics such as research, creating your listing data in bulk, also creating mock-ups in bulk, and this includes video mock-ups, by the way. And we're going to go over publishing your listings and designs designs in bulk to multiple products. So you can have, for example, a t-shirt and a sweatshirt in the same listing on Etsy. So many, many valuable tips and tricks in this video, lots of valuable information that you do not want to miss. So make sure to watch until the end. So to get started and set up, you will first of all need an Etsy store. And in case you aren't aware, it does cost 20 cents to list an item on Etsy. If you're completely new to this, there will be a referral link in the description. And if you open your store through that link, you will get 40 free listing credits, which is great for beginners. And the second thing you will need for this process is a My Designs account, which you can sign up to totally for free. There are paid plans with some additional features that I'm going to show in this video, but the free plan still enables you to sell print on demand products. So there will be a link to the sign up page for My Designs in the description below as well. So one important step of the print on demand process that is often overlooked is niche research, because rather than just creating a lot of random designs and uploading those, you should do some market research to see what is actually in demand and what has lower competition so you have a chance of standing out. I do have a dedicated playlist on my channel with lots of different niche research strategies and concepts, which you can check out for more in-depth tutorials, but I still wanted to give you a few tips right here that are more Etsy specific. One thing to note is that I personally, I enter evergreen niches most of the time and evergreen niches are hobby related, animal related or occupation related, which people are interested in all year around. So there's always some birthday gifts that people buy for someone who's interested in cycling, for example, throughout the entire year. You can also enter seasonal trends. That's something I do occasionally. So that would be things like Halloween, Christmas, Easter, July the 4th. Those ones are reoccurring every single year, but still the sales are more concentrated to one or two months throughout the calendar year. So seasonal trends and evergreen niches is what I look for. And the goal is to have something with demand, but low competition, meaning the search results should be lower. Gaming is a hobby. It is an evergreen niche, but it has hundreds of thousands of results for gaming t-shirts. That means it will be hard for us to stand out. It is better to try and find a niche or a search term with just a few thousand results or less. And that way, if it still has demand, we've got a way better chance of actually making sales. And a tool that can actually help you identify demand and also do things like keyword research on Etsy is Everbee. And I'll show you a few tips related to Everbee now. There will be a link in the description to a free trial to Everbee so you can follow along. So one thing you can do with Everbee is first of all, use this search mask to identify search volume for different keywords. So if we type in something very broad like Halloween t-shirt, for example, you should see lots of different suggestions and then Everbee is loading the monthly searches. So that is definitely really cool. This is a Chrome extension, by the way, that you have to install for all of these pop-ups to appear. It will be linked in the description. So that is one thing you can try out different search term like let's do stay spooky let's see what comes up and that's sort of a phrase for halloween we've got sweatshirt halloween shirt stay spooky skeleton pumpkins so there's some combinations right here let's do spooky halloween let's see what we get so you can get some ideas right here very quickly and also see the related uh, monthly search volume so spooky halloween spider pattern that's interesting and we've got another search with spider so maybe that's a, a sub niche idea for halloween so definitely interesting to see this info right here in the search box. Um, another thing you can do is let's say we want to just do some research in the Halloween niche itself. You can click on any of these listings and then analyze them further if you've got Everbee installed. So you get the 
this analyze listing button over here and that will show you a lot of different data points like the estimated monthly sales monthly revenue how old the listing is how many reviews it gets the conversion rate which is super valuable and we can also see a lot of the keywords that they're using down here with once again the associated search volume so you get a lot of extra data that you can't really see or access on Etsy alone if you're using Everbee so you can individually sort of sift through listings and analyze them you can also click on a shop and analyze the entire store. So we can do that by going to the left. You've got this sidebar right here for Everbee and you could click on uh, product analytics. Then I would click analyze all listings right here because by default it only loads a few of them. And now we've got 489 products analyzed and we can order these by monthly sales for example you can see the best sellers in this store that way you can hover over the designs and see what they are at a glance and there seems to be a lot of disney ripoffs right here which i do not recommend doing um, don't sell anything related to brands or intellectual properties but the benefit of having this tool is that you can see at a glance what a shop is doing really well with um, you can see the estimated sales again and some other data points that are really useful you can also filter through them right here and change the view. You can also click tag analyzer in the top right and that will bring up a lot of the tags that this shop is using along with the competition and search volume again so lots of handy features i also do like the keyword research tab over here where you can once again type in like a broader keyword or a more specific keyword however you like and then you will get a lot of related keywords with the volume you could quickly copy these by clicking on them and then use them in your listing or maybe look them up on etsy um, in terms of their competition and their demand so lots of valuable tools with an everbee that make research a lot easier if you're selling on etsy specifically so check it out i really like it and it seamlessly integrates with the etsy platform which is really nice so once you've gone ahead and done some niche research, created your designs, that is when we need to jump into My Designs. And the first thing you need to do is connect My Designs to your Etsy store, which is super easy and straightforward. I'm using a demo account here, by the way. I'm just saying that because I know someone will comment, why have you got $5 profit in the last 30 days? Um, so it is just a demo account. So to connect your Etsy store to My Designs, you can go to the settings tab, click on shops, and this is where we can click connect Etsy. You need to be logged in for this to work, logged into your Etsy account, and then it's very straightforward. If you do struggle at all, you do have a pop-out bar on the dashboard page that says get started. And here there is a quick video tutorial as well on how to integrate Etsy with my designs. So um, if you get stuck, just check out these help sections. Once you've got your shop connected, you will need to head to the listings tab on the left hand side. And this is where we essentially create our folders within my designs to store everything and organize our designs and listings. And we do that by clicking on the home button right here on this sort of folder location and that will open the collections window there's a lot of different collections right here yours if you're new will be empty and you can simply add a new folder like this give it a name so i'll call this one pod demo something like that you should probably call yours according to your niche the types of designs you've created that way it's easier to find them in future and we're going to use the default template right here you do have other options save templates for like a variety of different topics or products but the default works very well well, if you're just selling, you know, more traditional t-shirts, sweatshirts, that sort of thing on Etsy. So we're going to go with that. Now click add folder next. Then you want to select the folder over here and then hit open. And now we'll see an empty collection essentially. So we need to upload our designs. We can do that by clicking on upload over here and selecting the first upload option. Then you'll want to drag and drop your design files from your device into this field right here. They will all quickly load up and then we can click upload all like this. Confirm the action and upload designs and it will go through and import these into my designs. Now, one quick thing to note here while this is uploading is that with the free plan, you can do 24 bulk processes at once. Bulk processes, meaning creating mockups in bulk, for example. With the paid plans, you have higher limitations. So I think the first paid plan is 48 bulk processes and the top plan is 120. I'm, in this example, only using 18 designs, but you can do this process with 
up to 120 designs and it doesn't take much longer. Like the process is basically the same. You're just doing way more designs and getting way more value, way more time saved. So that's important to note, but the free plan still, you know, 24 listings created in bulk, that's still super valuable. Right, there we go. That has loaded up into a collection. You can see all of the designs right here. If you get a loading error like this, then just refresh your page and that should quickly fix it. You can hit F5, by the way, to refresh your page. You've also got a button right here to change the view. I quite like this option because it gives you a quicker overview over your different designs as well as the different mock-ups. So essentially we've got mock-up slots right here where we're going to save all of the different product mock-ups and the main file is our print file slot. If we change the view again, we've got data slots instead. So we've got the title field, description field and tags as well as inventory and pricing, which you don't really need to configure even. And you've got the keyword fields, which we're going to go into in a little bit. But the first thing we need to do is slightly change our template just to make life easier with the mockups later on. So if you click into the template section right here, you will see your different file slots at the bottom for the different mockups. So I like to create one, two, three, four, five different t-shirt mockups, and then three sweatshirt mockups. So that's why I'm going to change these slots right here to just make them easier to identify later. So we'd call this sweatshirt six instead of mockup six, and same with this one, sweatshirt. You can just easily click into them and update these. You don't have to do this step, it's just so it's easier to identify the correct mockups later on. So we've got one, two, three sweatshirt mockups, and the other mockup slots we will use for t-shirts. There's also a video mock-up slot, which is handy, which we're going to go into later. If you want to add new slots, you can also do that with this field over here. Give it a name like mock-up 11 or something, and then add the slot like this. And then once you're done, you can click on save in the top right corner, use the recommended option, don't use this bottom option, and click update template. So now if we hover over these again, you can see some of them have been renamed to sweatshirt instead of mock-up. So now it gets a bit more interesting because we're going to create these listings in bulk and my designs essentially has an AI feature called Fraser AI, which writes these listings for you optimized for Etsy all on its own. And the only thing the tool needs is one or two primary keywords that describe your design. And we enter these in the keywords section over here. So double click on this, that will change the slot for all of your listings to keywords. And then we need to enter the primary keyword field over here. So for this one, I would probably put spooky season right and then the next one says spooky season again you could have the same words there and it will create a different listing it won't you know copy and paste the same one but you could also add for example halloween at the end so that way it will integrate that word a little bit more into the ai listing that gets generated here we've got cute but creepy and it's a ghost maybe add ghost into that if you want to be part of your listing a bit more stay spooky we've got a rainbow so just a few keywords to help the tool understand what's going on and that's literally all you need. So go through all of your designs, all of your listings and enter some keywords. And then um, once you're done with that, you will need to hit save in the top right corner. Once you've got all of your primary keywords filled in and saved, you can head over to this button to select all of your listings and then click on Fraser AI. And now we can select right here, this field to be primary keyword. That's where it's pulling the information from. And it's going to save it into the title field and the tags field for us. That's what this tool will fill in and the product type you can change as well. So in our case, we want to sell t-shirts, but if you're selling other products, you can also select them down here and the AI will consider that when writing your listings. So once this is configured the same way I've got it, click submit, then hit confirm this action and continue. And now I'm going to click on or double click on listings again so we can see what happened. There we go. It's already done. It takes a few seconds and we've got the title and the tags filled in for all of these listings and um, with really, really cool, good looking keywords. Obviously not every single keyword will be perfectly relevant to your design. So you can still make changes or delete some tags if you wanted to, but this is going to save you endless amounts of hours of work because this AI actually pulls data or is trained on data from Etsy best sellers. So it is going to do a good job for you. And now all that's left 
is entering a description and we can use the same description for all of these products um, because we are going to be selling them on the same products. I will sell these on a t-shirt and on a sweatshirt. I'll show you how to set that up. So we want to add some information about those products in our description. I've created a sort of preset description that you can copy and amend and you know make your own if you wanted to. I will leave that in the description as well for you to copy and paste. And the way to quickly paste the description into all of these fields at once is by going to actions, edit in bulk, then you want to change the field right here to description. That's the field we want to fill in. You've got different actions that you can use right here. So add to end will work well for us. But if you want to edit your listings um, differently, you can find and replace words in bulk. You can overwrite fields, find and delete, lots of stuff like this. And essentially what we want to do now is paste the description in here. So there we go. I'll draw this down a bit so you get an idea. I've essentially put that this design is available on two products, t-shirts and sweatshirts. And I've got a bit of information about each of the products and um, for people to read. And that is it. So nice looking description. You can see a preview as well of what the listing will look like once we apply these selected settings to our listings. So once you're at this stage where everything is filled in and selected like I've got it, click apply to select listings, confirm and proceed. And there we go. Now the description field is also filled in for all of these listings and you can use this bulk edit function to generally create your listings. By the way, you don't have to use the phrase AI. This tool also helps you massively when creating listings from scratch. And I think phrase AI is limited to the paid plans. So bear in mind that you've got this edit in bulk feature as well for listing data. Next up, we've got the fun part, and that is creating the mock-ups for all of these designs in bulk. And once you've got this process down, it will literally take you five minutes to create hundreds of mock-ups. And there's a ton of different, really nice looking mock-ups inside of my designs as well, which is super helpful. So essentially, I like to change the view for this step so you can see everything at a glance, all of the different image slots right here. And once you've got all of your listings selected, you'll want to click on the mock-ups tab over here and click create create image mockup. That will open up the My Designs mockup generator. And it does look a bit overwhelming at first, but like I said, once you get used to it, it is a massive time saver. So this is very important for you to learn. So the first thing I would do right here is type in the product type that I want to create mockups for. So in my case, I want to sell the Gildan 5000. So enter that into the field up here. You have got different categories, by the way. So if you want to sell wall art or stickers, then you need to change the category. But for the Gildan 5000, if we type this in, we get a variety of different results, lots and lots of mockups. We've got different topics as well. So Christmas, fall, there's Halloween themed designs. And you can quickly save these as a favorite by clicking on this star symbol right here. And that way they will always show up at the top of your mock-up generator. You can also generate a preview on the right-hand side for each of these mock-ups. You've got the ability to change the color of the mock-up down here. So in our case, white would be good to show these designs because the designs are optimized for lighter colors. Essentially, the first thing I would like to do is, uh, because these are Halloween designs, I want to go with this mock-up right here. And I want to create a few variations of that mock-up in the colors that we're going to sell. So the first variation, will be white. Let's just generate a preview for this, see what it looks like. And then I want to add another variant with this button over here. And let's make that a different color. Instead of selecting it at random with this color picker, you can literally use the same color swatches that the print providers use. So I'm going to sell this t-shirt through my designs. My designs does fulfill your orders. You can alternatively use Swift POD as well, or Printful is integrated with my designs, but I'm going to use my designs for the Gildan 5000 because they've got the cheapest pricing. And you get all of these color swatches right here. So that way your mock-ups are actually accurate and they will look like the uh, the real t-shirt in real life. So I think for these designs, um, it would be nice to add an orange color as well, just because it suits Halloween. So let's generate a preview for that. And let's add a third color. If we click back into this color field, we could do a sand, right? So let's select the My Designs sand option over here. And that way, We've got a nice variety of a few different colors, not too many, but some options for the customer. The first preview has been generated. I think that looks really neat. And the next one, these are still processing. There we go, we've got the orange one done. That works quite well too. So 
That way we get an idea what the mockups will look like. Now, I don't just want to create these mockups in bulk, right? I want to also create some other ones with people on them. I want to create the sweatshirt mockups. And that is where the multiple mockups beta feature comes in. This is super powerful because if we enable this, we can now select multiple mockups. And again, these are all being created in bulk for all of our designs at the same time. And let's actually go ahead and select these two right here because I like to have some real life mockups as well as these sort of flat ones on the floor. It does say a detected duplicate output slots. So we need to actually go into the settings right here and change this. Let's do mockup four instead and change this one to mockup five. Yeah, that should fix it uh, because these output slots right here are already taken up two, one and three. Here we've got five and four. You can't have them duplicated and, and trying to save two mockups into the same slot. And for these ones, I would make one of these white and the other one maybe sand, right? Oh, you, you can't type in the word sand right here. You do have to click on the little t-shirt symbol and then type in sand. There we go. So that way we will get some real life mockups in different colors of a product as well as these flat ones. Whilst these previews are loading, I'm going to go ahead and change this to 1800. That is the other Gildan product that I want to sell in this same listing. And let's select a few mockups for this one. So I like this mockup a lot. Um, it says duplicate output slot again. So we need to change this to the first sweatshirt slot. That's why I changed the name. So it's easier to do this step. Then let's also change the color, first of all to white. Let's enable this flat Halloween themed mock-up, which we can do a different color here. Let's do, let's do sand. And let's also enable this male mock-up just to showcase that it is a unisex product that we're selling. And um, I think my designs doesn't have, no, my designs does not have an orange color option right here. So I think there is like a gray that could also work. Let's do, yeah, sport gray. That might actually work well for these sweatshirts too with these designs. So all of these are now configured and ready for us to go. So now all that's left is clicking generate mockups in the top right corner, clicking confirm action, generate mockups, and then we will see a massive job of 144 mockups being created right here. This is added to the queue. So within usually like half a minute, one minute, my designs literally creates over a hundred mockups for you. And that is something that would usually take hours, right? And be super, super boring. So even if that mockup generator looks a bit complicated at first and how to navigate, once you get used to it, you just need like five minutes and then you've got all of these different mockups created super quickly. So now if I double click onto any of these, they will open up in full and we've got this little bug again. So just refresh the page for it to load properly. There we go. So we've got the orange version right here. We've got the white alternative sand as well. And all of these have been populated, all of our listings with the same mock-ups. We've got the sweatshirt right here at the end in different colors. So super, super nice looking listing already with these super nice mock-ups. And now, now that we've got these static mockups created, we can also use them to generate video mockups in bulk. If you hover over a listing on Etsy and it has video mockups enabled, then that video mockup automatically starts playing and it draws in the customer's attention in search results. They are proven to convert better statistically, so it does make sense to add some video mockups and you have that ability in my designs over here. So once you have everything selected, click on mockups, go to create video mockup, Deselect the main file right here because we don't want our actual design file to be part of the video mockup. We just want these static images to be in there. So you can deselect some of these if you want to or you know have them all selected however you'd like. You can generate a preview, but you don't have to. I would change the output file slot to video mockup just so it's easier to you know identify that later and then click submit over here in the bottom right corner. And now that's been added to your drop queue. It does take a little bit longer than the static you know image mockups, which is understandable with them being videos, but usually after a few minutes this job is done as well. So there we go, the video mockups are done. You can preview them by clicking onto them. And there we go. We've got a nice slideshow of our mockups. I do believe they're adding more templates for these video mockups to make them more engaging and even more interesting for customers. So that's definitely exciting. But for now, that is already a great feature. And now we can move on to the next step, which is the last stage of this, and that is publishing your products to Etsy. So to start publishing your listings, make sure you've got them all selected and then click on publish in the top right corner. You want to select products from the drop down because digital is for digital downloads 
products is for physical products that we're selling. On this page, the first one, you don't really need to change anything much. You can select different store if you have multiple stores integrated with my designs, or you can also adjust the clothing category. Perhaps if you want to be more specific, you know, you can go into the different genders and specific product types, but you do not have to do that. In this case, I think clothing is fine. Let's go to pick a product, which is the next step. So we had the 5,000, good at 5,000 in our mock-ups, and that is this option right here. Don't choose the L or B if you created the same sort of mock-ups as me. There we go. Now we just need to select one of the production partners that my designs offers. The Swift PUD, Printful, and my designs has their own fulfillment as well. And that is actually the cheapest option. So I'm going to choose that. And now we move to the mockups page. So the way this works is on the left hand side, you see your listing preview. What sort of mockups are currently included in your listing? On the right hand side, we configure a few different things. First of all, you've got the choose colors section. This is where we choose the colors that we offer for sale. So in this case, I would have to select white, sand, and orange, and deselect the black color. You have to click on it twice to deselect because clicking on it once just hides a mock-up. It doesn't actually deselect it properly. So there we go. Now we've got sand, orange, and white selected. And you will see that we've got these extra additional mock-ups, which we don't really want these. Uh, these are just a preset that, you know, you don't have to use. And in order to hide these, click on this eye symbol right here that's crossed out. And there we go. All of them are now hidden. Additionally, you can also select or should select a size chart right here. And by default, it's black. In our case, we want it to be white, ideally. And you've got different templates. I think this template looks quite nice for a Halloween design. So we're going to use that. So that's been added to a listing. And at the bottom, this is where you find additional images, meaning the mockups that we just generated in bulk. And you can quickly add these in by just, you know, clicking through them like so all of them have been added to a listing. You can arrange the order of these and how they appear in Etsy in which order. I would put the size chart uh, somewhere towards the middle. You can, you know, add some variety by having these uh, lifestyle mock-ups mixed up with the flat ones. One last thing we need to do now that we've got the Gildan 5000 configured is we need to add the sweatshirt as well. So up here, you want to click add product and then type in 1800. That's going to bring up the Gildan 1800 sweatshirt. If we click into it, once again, you've got the choice of different production partners. You can use Swift PUD if you want to, because it does have cheaper pricing than my designs for this product. And I'm pretty sure they've got the same colors. Yeah, they've got sand, they've got white, and they've got sport gray. So you could use Swift PUD instead. If you want it to be a bit easier with the shipping and management, then perhaps use my designs. So um, I'm just going to use my design in this example. And now we need to do the same steps right here with the colors that we want to offer for sale. So let's select white, sand and sport gray, which is what we created our mockups with and deselect black by double clicking onto this. Let's hit the eye symbol to make sure these mockups right here get hidden. There we go. And let's also configure a size chart uh, with the same template. And let's do sport gray in this case. I think it looks good. There we go. Now we've got the maximum number of mock-up images in a listing. It is limited to 10 and the video mock-up does not count as a mock-up on Etsy. So you cannot add any more than this. And yeah, I think that is the mock-up stage done with. Just make sure we've got no other color selected that we didn't want. I do think I want the white option in the front for the primary thumbnail. So let's do that. Gildan 5000 also looks fine. Yes, so perfect. Now let's move on to the next step, which is choosing the prices. And this page essentially shows you the pricing for your products that is displayed on Etsy, how much you're selling your products for on this right hand side, this column right here, which is currently empty. It also shows you the cost of the product, what my designs will charge you and the approximate profit, which is obviously, you know, price minus cost. To configure these in bulk, we're going to use this side over here. So at the moment, we're configuring the Gildan 5000, the pricing for that, and we're choosing the price for all sizes and all colors. So let's do 24.99 right here and apply that. There we go. That's been filled in. Now you get a, you know, decent profit approximation right here. If you're wondering why I've got such a high price in this, I do like to offer discounts on Etsy. So if, if customers get like 20% off or something, and maybe even a cheaper shipping price, then some of that profit will definitely be eaten away at. That's why I like to start off with a higher pricing, just in case you're wondering. Now, another thing that you might notice is that for some of the bigger sizes, 3XL and 2XL, your profit is actually smaller because the production cost is more expensive for these bigger sizes. And we can quickly change this and adjust the pricing by changing the size field over here. So let's do 2XL and let's make that $1 more expensive, $25.99. 
hit apply and there we go that's changed to $17 profit let's do the same for the 3xl let's do $26.99 for that one and here we go now our approximate profit is pretty much the same for all of our sizes and colors one more tip at this stage I would recommend trying out the strategy where you make one of these variants just one of them very cheap or cheaper let's say because that is going to draw more clicks to your listing and you can do that by changing the size to S, the cheapest size or the, maybe the most likely people will choose I don't know change the color as well to maybe a color that you think people wouldn't necessarily want to pick I'm guessing for Halloween people want to get orange and maybe white so let's select sand in this case and let's make this $19.99 so that way your profit is a lot lower with a discount it might say like $15.99 when people see your listing and if they click into it most of your products are still going to be a higher price so it's a bit misleading you don't have to do this strategy but it will get you some extra clicks because essentially your listing will appear to be cheaper you don't have to do it but it is an option now let's do the pricing for the Gildan 1800 one thing I forgot is the size right here is being displayed as Gildan 5000 and I think that's what customers see on Etsy so you can change this with the size prefix let's do unisex t-shirt right here uh, dash as well at the end of this and hit apply and there we go that looks a bit neater for the customer in the listing and let's actually move on to the Gildan 1800 and change the pricing here it works exactly the same you just you know change the price in bulk to something like 34.99 and then you adjust the bigger sizes where the cost is increased right and there we go I've changed the, all the prices I've changed the prefix right here to sweatshirt and now we can head over to the preview publish info step which is the last stage you get a quick glance at your listing the primary mock-up the listing data right here and the keywords for all of these and by the way if you're wondering like the primary mock-up is a static image here but it will automatically pull that video mock-up in if someone hovers over your listing so that's it final stage we're ready to hit publish in the top right corner and once you click this it will add a new job to the queue and it will upload all of this listing data all of these products and video mock-ups everything will be uploaded to your Etsy store into the drafts section so there you still have to actually select all of them and publish them to Etsy manually and pay that fee or you know use your free credits if you've opened a store through a referral link but essentially you will find all of these listings in your drafts folder in your listing manager on Etsy and they will all be ready to go in just a few minutes once this job is processed and then once an order comes in by the way if someone places an order on Etsy it will be automatically sent to your my designs account they will start fulfilling it you don't have to do anything only if like a customer sends a request on Etsy you have to respond to them but the order fulfillment is all automated if you are new to my designs you would massively benefit from watching this video next which is my entire overview of the my design suite as well as their pricing plans so that you know which plan is right for you and how my designs can help make your life life easier.